that's just the minutes. Is there like a, a time frame or 
our time and schedule for all of city staff, because Anna, Amy, Wendy are all here. So how does that work with city offices still being open? Do you guys like I'm here all day, they're there half days. There's like a rotation. I'm here all day and those two switch off half days. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I have on the accounts payable. Can I just get copies of, in my, not right now, but in my box, maybe later, Bolton and Bank, Eckert, and Myers? Um, I want Any other discussion? Motion approved. Consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I'll second. Bill. Aye. Michelle. Aye. I have a line. Melissa. Aye. Boy. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Sheriff's report. I don't have anything to add. Much to add. You guys have any questions? Any questions? Comments? Okay, then let's move on. Public hearing. of the City Council and Public tonight. Um, we are asked to conduct a public hearing to vacate easements within Rolling Meadows, second edition. Uh, this is the uh, vacation of the drainage and utility easements as delineated, dedicated, as well as the park as delineated and dedicated on the plat. Um, this is in preparation for the replatting of this land um, to Rolling Meadows Greenway Corridor. The property is currently owned by uh, parcels by the City of Montrose as well as Mr. Gary Brummer. And according to statutes, prior to the vacation of easements, we were required to publish notice in the paper. And we've also contacted utility companies, and the City Council is the body to conduct that hearing and accept input. A copy of the plan for drawing um, with the utilities were included in your packet as well as published. I'll turn it over to you, but uh, the recommendation is from staff to proceed with the vacation of those items. Okay. At this time, we'll open up for any comments in reference to that. We need to close this session and go to the public hearing session. Andy? Or, yeah, you're formally going. You, there is no vote needed to go into it to come out of okay. it. This time we'll close our council meeting and go to open meeting, the public forum. Any comments in reference to the resolution? Yeah. Um, what were the why were there original drainage and utility easements there? Uh, we, the city currently has a drainage, or has sewer line and water line running through that area, uh, so when we extended utilities out to Forest Creek, uh, that's the route uh, to extend utilities out there. With the new plat that's coming in, it'll be dedicated to the city right away, street right away, so basically we're just taking the easements out from underneath and then it'll be pulled the right away, so the easements aren't needed anymore. Kind of Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and, move and open the uh, council meeting again. Sure. Included in your packet on page 25 is a resolution 2016-24. Um, if you are supportive of the vacation of easements, we ask the council to adopt that resolution. Discussion? Motion to approve 2016-24. Second. 
I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2016-24, resolution approving the vacation of drainage and utility easements in LFA, rolling meadow second edition, and all part in rolling meadow second edition. Second. I'll second that. Michelle? Aye. I will not. Melissa? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Jim? Aye. Motion carries by low of the vacate. City Council reports. Yeah, we are. I'll do that first. Um, Ruth, you want to come up first? Sure. <laughs> and then pass these around and I'll start reading that copy. Great. Okay, uh, Mayor and Council, thanks for letting us come in tonight to do this. Um, as you may have seen, and I've got the open form letter, we live over in 345 Garfield, my husband Dennis and I. And I noticed a couple neighbors here, um, including one that I can't really talk about. Um, yes. Mary Oman is my next door neighbor. Um, we've given you some pictures of water, standing water in our yards, front and back. And it's been an annoyance for the five years we've been here. But now we're just tired of it. We saw a neighbor two doors down having to dig out their yard to reseal their basement for water problems. And our yard is in the middle of the block from Highway 12 to the water tower on Garfield. And we have appeared to have the deepest front yard of all of it. And there's drainage ponds, as far as I understand, on both the south side of the wall and down by the water tower. But we have as much water in our front yard as they ever get. <laughs> and we want something done about it. So for the, to the city engineer, what can we do? We put in a new driveway a year ago, and we put in new drainage, new culverts, and that did not help. And we paid for those, we did not ask the city to do for us. So we would like some help, and I know our neighbors do too. It's very soggy front and back. When it's raining like that, we can't get into the back half of our yard. If anybody has any questions, you can ask any of the Garfield residents. Um, and there have been some changes in reference to that. I'll get some background. I can't really take a position on this one because I'm affected by it. But um, when the new row houses went in across the street, the drainage from that side used to come across the road and then go into the ditch on, on our side of that road. Uh, that was diverted as part of that project because there was a lot more impermeable surfaces there. So that then went behind Rosehaven. Rose um, since I have lived there since 1995, the ditches have had standing water after a rain for probably two to three days afterwards, um, which is not consistent with what drainage should be. Um, there are two properties, myself and the uh, roofs, that are primarily the lowest on that stretch. Uh, from the property north of yours, I believe that drains north, and everything drains north to the swale that goes behind those properties. And from this property uh, back north, it drains to the water tower, as I understand it. And that's the way it's supposed to, but it, it's higher in the middle than it, than it won't allow the proper drainage. Is that about right, Drew? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. South on one side of us. Yeah, south on one side of us and north on the other and we sit with the what my husband refers to as an increase in our property taxes because we have lake property. Um, and they also, something I didn't mention is you know, there's also there's also the concern about standing water and mosquitoes and it's horrible. We've been killing mosquitoes crazily in our house this week. We also have a six year old that lives with us, we have permanent custody of our granddaughter, and as Greg could attest to, she's a wild one, and she gets to running, and I would hate to see her lose her balance and fall face first into the water. There is a six to eight inches of water in our times. 
It was the last spring storm we got for the end of July. If you drive down Garfield, ours is the yellow house with the red trim on the bottom and the green truck in the driveway usually. The water in that last big storm was right up to the tree in our front yard. You're talking in your, in your front yard? In our yeah. front yard. So where's your tree, tree at in relation to, like, is it, like, you're saying the ditch is it's, completely it's, full? Or? It's about halfway from the house to the street. Okay. It's the only tree. Would you like me to make some comments there? Or? Please. Um, there is, as you're probably aware, there's a fairly long history on this on this one block uh, area with drainage. Um, as, as you indicated, it's been an issue for quite some time. It's been on the city's radar for, for just as long. You know, I've worked here in Montreal since 2005, and it's been on the list ever since then, so for the past 10 plus years. That's long. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's still on the list. Uh, we're, as you know, we're working on our capital improvement plan right now. Uh, it is one of the projects on the list. Um, there's a, as far as what can be done on it, um, there's, a, there's a number of different things that can be done, but the correct, probably the best solution is to put in curb and gutter and, and, uh, and reduce the street there. And, you know, the pavement is in temporary condition either. Um, so that's one of the options that we're considering as part of the capital improvement plan to do that. Um, and I guess it's funding source, you know, all this, all these things need to be talked about by the council. Um, but as far as what can be actually done, um, basically filling in the ditches and putting in curb and gutter, um, there still might need to be slight swales behind there. When we were looking at it earlier, um, now if we fully reconstruct the road, it might be able to be changed, I don't know, but we're still looking at probably keeping a slight swale in behind there, but it would be, for the most part, filled in, and there'd be catch basins, inlets in behind the curb to catch that water. So it would take care of the drainage. It is fairly costly uh, to completely redo the road, redo the pavement, put in curb and gutter, and put in storm sewer system. I think we have in our CIP pencil in about 500,000 right now to do that area from high to public. Highway 12 to the water tower? Correct, correct. Is, and, and right now I know the street is actually above, I think, the level of the house at some point. Oh, yeah. 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 Easily. And that's why I say if we completely redo the street, we'd have to look, you know, we don't want to cut the street down too much because we have water and other things in there, so we get into utility issues if we cut the street down too much. That's why I more than likely would probably be in a situation where we put in curb and gutter, but still have to have low depression areas behind there would be you know, much less than what's there now and then we have to put in some sewer so we would take care of the drainage. Yeah. Is, do we have any options for alternate solutions on a, on a shorter term that might not be as far out? I think I'd have to take a look at the closer look at that there and, and Sean and I'd have to take, take a look at that and see if there's anything that could be done in the meantime to make the situation a little better but not completely Corrected, I, I don't know for sure. How far up did you say that was for possible curbing? How far up did you say it might be for curbing and gutters? Uh, we haven't. Yeah. We haven't determined that. Determined that you know. Know. Where is this called? What is currently in the planning? The comprehensive planning? That's under their new right now. Is it supposed to be in there?
All right, Evan. Maybe yours for volunteers. Good evening, Mayor Council. So a while back, I had uh, requested some information on the volunteer of the year applications because at a council meeting um, months ago, there was uh, quite a controversy brought up about it. The council spent something like 15 minutes discussing this topic, which has not really come up before. About instead of uh, what it sounded to me like, instead of recognizing one person as a volunteer of the year, to recognize everybody of some sorts. At least that kept coming up many times, saying, well, let's recognize everybody, let's recognize everybody. And um, at the time you mentioned you got two anonymous letters complaining about the process that had false information, but you brought them up here, you got, even though you guys are understanding it's from what some people brought up is you don't discuss uh, anonymous letters or things such as this. Well, since that time, I've seen those um, recommendations for volunteer of the year and for some reason even though you brought up this uh, fact of the recognizing everybody you had nominated two people yourself and your wife had done also and your wife had nominated you for volunteer of the year it just seemed very odd that uh, at that time that something like this would have been brought up as I recall, you know, there hasn't been controversy about this in my recent past. That you would bring it up to such lengths at a council meeting when you had nominated a few people and your wife had nominated to yourself. So what are you looking for, Evan? I don't understand what your point is. My point is it just it just seems a little odd that you would bring up something like that at a council meeting for such lengthy discussion when you yourself had nominated a couple people and your wife had nominated you. It just seemed like something, I don't know, maybe were you displeased with the process of some sorts? I mean it just, no, just would be a citizen the sitting out there other than making the nominations. And the process process was the they are the I've never seen such Discussion spent. I mean, it was like something like 15 minutes was spent discussing this. I believe part of that discussion was because we have done it different ways in the past. We've done it as groups, we've done it as individuals, and we had lost that grant or whatever when we had the volunteer dinner. So, with all that money, we were trying to figure out which way we should proceed, which is why there was such discussion. I mean, I would think most people would have at least one person they recognize, right? You recognize everybody. I mean, I know there's discussion about a day change, but it kept coming up. Well, let's recognize everybody. Let's recognize everybody. But then again, at the same time, you had nominated people, and you've been nominated by your wife. I think the discussion was to nominate the volunteer groups as a whole and do more to, not to, to recognize the volunteer groups that are with us and the volunteers overall. And I think that was a, the gist of the conversation, how we did that. And the recognition dinner was also part of that discussion. Am I correct on that? And all groups and organizations in the community, after we decided what to do, were given, sent out a letter stating that they could nominate whatever group, organization that they would like to. Okay, and then another thing I just wanted to mention was had to deal with, you know, Greg's, you know, personal contact with members of other members of the council and community. At the time, it seemed like you've kind of had a personal vendetta. One thing was about that school crossing over there. And I just, as a, as, a, as, a, as a former supporter of you, I just asked that you not follow as a uh, mayor. How, how do you mean personal vendetta? What are you talking about? It just, it just seems like that many times <coughs> you've attacked certain members. Maybe one in particular. I know at one meeting I asked if we were going to have a meeting because you spent so much time directing your comments towards a specific person. Now, I know when that school crossing came up before Steve got hit by a car, that uh, one member of the council had brought up that they thought that there may be an issue with cars not stopping there, and you even almost immediately responded that there was no issue. And then, you know, 
I see some time after that there's police cars sitting there in the morning making sure presumably that people are stopping and since then they've upgraded lighting and some of it might be put in the I don't think there was no issue. I think I recall it saying that the school had reported there was an issue. Yes. Okay. okay. So I mean it's it just it. it came across as something as as a closing comment versus you know something that you mentioned say, okay, let's look into it later further or what have you. So all right, thank you. You bet. I do have a comment on that, if that's okay. Um, there was discussion on that volunteer dinner, um, that it wasn't handled, or I don't remember how it was worded exactly, but it was taken from Park and Rec to City Council. And with that discussion, then the City Council was to have the next um, volunteer dinner, which should have been in April, and it didn't happen. So discussing with Park and Rec at different times, they would like to actually see that dinner go back to them and not under the city council. As they really, in previous years, they've, done, they've been doing it or been a part of it, and the city has never really been a part of that. So I think That's, that they should. The city was, is the one that did the volunteer dinner with the exception of probably one year or two years. Otherwise, right, it's, but otherwise the, the city always did it. The people that were in the planning stages of that, though, were um, part of, I don't know if it was Park and Rec or Planning and Zoning or County 12. I don't remember which one it was, but I know that some of the people that we have on Park and Rec right now. From the grant. Right. It was done with the grant money. The grant money. So, but I, I don't see why the city council needs to be, I think it was fine the way it was with Park and Rec. I think what we had to do was move it to city sponsorship because city is actually funding that dinner. Right, but we had it that the city was going to put it on and kind of took it away from Park and Rec. But the city fell short of putting it on this year. Because that should have been done in April. Because April is a volunteer month. There's a volunteer week. When was it done last year? That wasn't it's year. always been October, but then it was switched. To coincide with, we used to be in October. Used to be in April. April. It used to be in April a time of volunteer, because that's volunteer month. It used right. to be during the volunteer week in April, and it was switched to October when we got the HCP right. grant right. because it was done in conjunction with the planning um, phase of the HCP grant every year. Yeah, yeah. And so we can. So it's held like three years, Joe, in October. I think three years. So then I just asked that it goes back to the way it used to. I mean, I don't think the city needs to be a part of that, but my only concern is with it going back to Park and Rec is what if a Park and Rec member should really be volunteer of the year? Well, it's, it's all the nominations go and they get put in, and the way we had it last year as judges, it was the president of each organization, planning and zoning, um, Park and Rec, Highway 12 redevelopment, and then uh, Joanne, because she was a part of the HCP and kind of do all that. And then we have staff members. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we picked an individual, you know, the head of each organization to work it. So that we weren't a part of it, so that they can't come back and say, well, you know, we don't so want to be part it. of that. So why don't we keep it uniform and have the president of each organization actually put on the dinner? Instead of it sponsored by one one group, have it you know put on across the board with all organizations. We could, but do they want to be a part of that? I think they were okay with being part of judging, sure. but I don't know if they would be okay with part of planning. Sure. And then we have to decide where does it come from. Because right now we have it under city council. City council pay yeah, for funding, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So does it go back under part of that funding, or what is going on? Portion parking rec planning zoning. I don't know. Where's that funding tag too? I think it's tag to the council. It's not this year it is, but it can go back. It used to always be under the general fund. For years it was in the general fund when it was done by the city staff. Chris Richter used to do it for years. She did it. And it was just funded, I mean, it was just budgeted under the general fund.
Was it led back to Parker Rec? I think uh, funding under the general fund, Parker Rec. But, yeah, who's going to organize it? Parker Rec can organize. And then the
Financial update. Did you guys want to do your city council monthly community reports? I don't think that we should do any community reports. Do you want to start the activity reports? Sure. So since the last council meeting, I attended the personnel meeting in July, the EDA meeting in July. I attended the Wright County uh, Planning Commission meeting. I attended a uh, union negotiation meeting, the volunteer town hall meeting. I attended the party at the park, um, park and rec meeting. There was another union negotiation meeting that I attended, the National Night Out for Forest Creek Development. Um, I also attended Taste of Delano last week Collected, what our percent is, and then I also put out there what our expected amount 
is at this time of the year based on when we receive our taxes, our LGA, all those kind of things. So if anybody has any questions. Questions? Comments? Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Um, and we move Park and Rec up next. So Park and Rec. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, you have it in here, the draft of our agenda minutes from August 1st in your packet, but I do want to make sure that we, from the Summer Splash event, the commissioners also want to recognize and thank the City Council for participating. Uh, soliciting for donations, um, Christina Benfield would like to have permission to solicit for donations on behalf of the Park and Rec Commission. Maybe we have any concerns for preference of that? Andy as well. Typically, we have a form that is given yes. to, yeah, um, when we usually get it, in, there's just a generic form that says Park and Rec is looking, so she just needs a copy of that. Do we have, does the cops have a vote on that? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve Christina Benfield's solicit for donations on behalf of the department. I'll second it. Melissa? Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Joan? Aye. Michelle? Aye. I vote aye. Motion carries by a vote. Thank you. Um, is there any questions you have on the minutes? Question I 
down for the council tonight. Um, I think the personnel committee um, originally said cross the voluntary, I mean had voluntarily, no, cross out the voluntary leave, so it would just be regardless if they left within 12 months? Yes. Yes. Um, upon uh, just a little uh, review from the, a final review from the attorney, there was also a suggestion at the personnel policy addendum for salary increase guidelines. This is the last page of the policy. Um, it would add employees at the maximum level of their pay range may be eligible for cost of living adjustment in any given year. I think that that was something that was supposed to be in there that wasn't in there the last time it was passed. And then um, I think Andy just had one more addition that he, or one more on temporary versus um, seasonal employees. Mayor Council, um, so um, I, I did a little bit more research. <coughs> about seasonal and temporary employees, and it wasn't in time to make the packet, but I would suggest doing another change to the definition of seasonal employee and temporary employee to combine those uh, two terms, because, let's see if I can find the page for that, page 51 in the packet at the bottom, it talks about, see, it has a separate definition for seasonal and a separate definition for temporary. The idea is the same in the personnel policy, they don't receive benefits, uh, here for just a fine period of time. Um, how, however, the way we have it now, we have seasonal employee with 100 days or less to conduct seasonal work and a temporary employee for 67 days or less, and that kicks over to page 52. Uh, under state law, there isn't really a difference between seasonal and temporary. They're kind of thrown into the same bucket. And so you can have somebody who would work with the city for 67 days or less in a given year. And if they do that, they're not technically a public employee, then such that they could be solicited by a union um, if they stay under that amount. And that could be any age of person, basically zero to 99 years, years of age. So, so that's one form of seasonal and temporary employee. The other form of seasonal or temporary employee can work up to 100 days within a year. So you have some more time to work. However, there's a caveat on that. That person who works at that level needs to be uh, 22, uh, uh, eight, 22 years old or less, full-time students enrolled in an educational institution before being hired, and they have an intent to continue or to return to that uh, educational um, institution. If that's the case, then they can work up to 100 days in a calendar year and not be eligible to be solicited by the union. Um, so so those, those two types of employees, I think, would be, it'd be just a little bit simpler if we combine that into one definition, which I've um, emailed out to Maggie and Sean, and we can just put that in the, the definition of personnel policy, if that, if that sounds right. I can pass it around too, but that was my intent on that. So just a housekeeping change, really, because those state statute requirements are going to govern you no matter what. And I'm sure everybody at the SAP would keep track of these employees to um, keep them in this Discussion? Motion. I'll make a motion to um, approve the personnel policy amendments as listed and explained by Andy. Second. <coughs> Well, I think I think we have the you have the option to do that because it's just amendments on the agenda, so there oh. should be another amendment possible. Okay. But I have a question on page 56. Performance reviews will be discussed with the employee. Employees do not have the right to change or agree their performance review, but may submit a written response, which will be attached to the performance review. I don't necessarily agree with that because um, the performance reviews are done by you know one or maybe even two people, but then if 
the employee doesn't agree with it, don't they have the right to then bring it to, say, the council? With discussion, not necessarily agree with it, but question it? But isn't that going to occur because the performance reviews, with, I would assume with the, with the attached letter, will automatically come to council for council to approve? And well, the council, these last two years, has only gotten the, the recommendation of a pay raise. In, in previous years, it's been the council's always set in with the reviews. So then at that time, that the employee could discuss or agree or disagree, but the last couple reviews, that has not happened. So that's what I'm kind of asking. We've only had a personnel committee that's ever set in on reviews prior. Personnel committee members are the ones that set in on the reviews, not the entire council. Right. But that didn't happen the last few years. They've already been done with. Um, There's not committee Not this, not this, this current year. There's been no yeah, reviews done, period, this year. Huh? There has been no reviews done, period, this year. Yeah, they haven't been finalized. They haven't been finalized. But they, they haven't been given, period. But, but raises were recommended. So we no, they were.
a motion on the table. Do you wish to amend that motion? Melissa? Um, just um, as um, excuse me, Eddie and um, as amended by Right. Our current discussion. Yes, current discussion. I will second. Boyd. All right. Wait. Jill. One second. So, did you, was there agreement to leave that voluntarily also? Crossed out. Crossed out. So, yes. if they leave voluntarily or involuntarily? Or involuntarily. Okay. They leave, period. They leave, they have to be If they leave in any fashion. Okay. Okay, um, like you said, I Joe. Hi. Melissa. Hi. Michelle. Hi. I vote aye. One carries by a vote. Website update. This is the item that was recommended for approval to the council. Maybe you want to go through that? Sure. Um, this is brought to the personnel committee as well. Um, the current website is managed by Five Technology. The city's been with the company since 2013. The cost of the website at that time to update was about $5,250, and it costs about uh, $150 a month to maintain. Staff currently administers the website. Um, right now, staff is looking at ma making the website more user-friendly by digitalizing all forms, customizing the website to make it unique to Montrose, make it easy to navigate, and enhance citizen engagement. Um, staff currently sought out a quote from Five Technology to ask what it would cost to digitalize all the city forms, which pretty much means that uh, residents could fill in the forms on the website and it would be downloaded into um, to like city email. Um, the cost would be about $120 an hour. Two forms would take about five to six hours, which would cost about $600 to $720 to digitalize just two documents. Um, we have about 12 documents and more that we want to kind of digitalize and put on the website. Um, that includes like building permits, moving in and out forms, and um, other forms of that nature. Um, this would allow um, another option for residents to submit email or information to the website instead of mailing, faxing, e emailing, or traveling to City Hall. Um, staff contacted Gov Office. It's a, a website company that specifically works with government. Um, uh, I personally have worked with this company in another city. Uh, they offer a more customized website. They offer super forms, which is what a which is a document that um, which, which, which what I was stating before. It's like a digital document, and you can create as many as you want. Um, as time goes on, I'm sure we'll have more forms that we want to digitalize or um, allow residents to be able to just submit electronic. Um, the the website um, there is no startup fee for this. Like if we would change over to this website, um, the only cost would be to transfer all the files over from the old to the new, except I would be able to alleviate those costs because I've done this before. So there wouldn't be any startup fees because I've been able to, um, I've worked with another city where I've been able, I was able to transfer all the documents mm -hmm. before, so I know how to do that. Um, the, the, the cost would just be like kind of, what we have now, it's like a maintenance fee. Right now it's $150 a month. Um, the cost would be, of the new website, would be $280, about $280 a month for a three to five year contract. Um, like I said, um, it would just it's just another option that's available, just staff trying to make it more user friendly and allowing another option for residents to be able to send in information. Um, so the personnel committee recommends to council approving the update of the city website. Um, like I said, it's just another option that we're looking into at this time. Where is this money coming from? Uh, 
$3,270, you said? Yep, so currently we pay $150, so it would be another $130 a month for the website that we would have to budget for. for the right, and where is that coming from currently? We wouldn't start would until January, January. so it's in the new budget. And how is that paid like, on a yearly basis or monthly like right now? Um, I believe right now, it sounds like it's yearly. Yeah, it looks like it's a yearly, and I broke it out to yeah, a monthly to be here. Yeah. Um, now, with these digitalized forms, if there's any that need payment, like a building permit, are they able to then submit the payment at the same time, or do they still have to go into the office to do that? Nope, they, they, we do already have a payment option okay. through PSN on our website, so they would be able to do both. Okay, so it would just get added, it basically would be the same as utilities, it would just get added as another option? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And if you stayed with our current website, to do the super forms would be yep. somewhere between $3,600 and $4,380. Yep. So, yeah, so if you want to, if we would want to actually try and digitalize the forms with our current website, we would be paying about $700 or $600 to $720 just for two forms. So if we wanted to do all of them, it would be a few, a few grand. Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting that out there because this is the way I'm just putting it out there. Um, so another $3,000, $3,300 to digitize all these forms to alleviate um, residents having to come into City Hall, mailing, faxing, emailing, or traveling even to City Hall, which makes everything a lot easier. And I mean, that's the way of technology these days. But then in return, does that take away time that's needed from the employees at City Hall? Because now you're not filling out forms, you're not greeting customers, you're not, do we still? I mean, it's just. I mean, what do you, I mean, that's just a thought. I mean, because if we now have it to where nobody's really even entering City Hall, which like I said, that's the way of the world. You know, people don't want it. Everything on, you know, through the computer is much easier. But then what do we have all of our city staff? Well, I mean, it's still, the data is still coming to us. Right. We're still processing it. It's just another option for residents. A lot of residents right. like to be able to do stuff online and to submit stuff. And so it's just, it makes it more convenient. It's just another convenience for our residents. And the only thing, too, is it gives us a much better and much more responsive website as well that works towards government as opposed to one that does not. Like I said, it's just another option that we were looking into. Um, Gov Office has been around for probably 10 to 15 years. Ever since websites started, they've been around and they, they deal strictly with governments. So they're really, I mean, if you go out to any of that event, our Gov Office, they're really actually very user friendly for government. With the people that come in and do like building permits as an example, have they recommended that hey, it, would, it would be easier if we had this online? Or I mean, what's, you know, what's the percentage of people that do you know? I don't have a percentage. I mean, I know right now we receive them by email, we receive them by fax. Um, I think they're always looking for, I mean, there are people who do need to submit fairly large documents, plans, that it, this is obviously not the best option. Uh, I mean, you can do digital like plans, but usually our building inspector requires large prints for some of them. Um, some we get by mail, so it's just kind of a preference thing. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I think that would be it would make it easier for citizens to need to do things. I mean, not specifically you know, building permits too, but being like animal services, you know, instead of trying to find the time to get to City Hall, it would be you know, easy to just put in the information and make work done. So I think it's a benefit for residents too who may not um, be able to make it to City Hall for hours for whatever reason. Even, I mean, even if you take out the forms part of it, I mean, it's a convenience. The forms on there will be a convenience. But even if you take that out, we've had a lot of people that have talked to us about our website not being very user friendly when it comes to government. They can't find things out on ours. Um, when it was set up, I mean, it's 
the people that set it up, they do a lot of different websites, but not city websites. They've only done a couple of city websites. And it's just not set up really the way government would be. Any other comment? Yeah, Michelle, you were talking about uh, the, the website possibly taken from uh, jobs that are already there. You got to remember also that not everybody does have computer access. Right. That's so true. they're still going to have to come in and talk to uh, a, a city member. Right. Right. Yeah. And we still have to process them. The difference would be instead of them coming through the front door, they're going to email it or you know fill it out. So we're still going to have to process it. Further discussion on the website update? There's a motion. Motion. To approve. My question is, I mean, I'm just going to 
I've had numerous complaints lately addressed to me, um, and I've addressed them to city staff. And some of the people have asked to remain anonymous. <coughs> and, um, you know, and I let the city staff know that they want to remain anonymous. But I will ask them, you know, if they can give their name or not. But then they're worried about name and retaliation. So to me, that's an anonymous request, right? Right. Which I have been following up on, right. which right. has actually led me to be put in a tough situation because I can't follow up very well. Like when I mean, I have to go through you, and I would rather go through the person that's actually complaining because I need a paper, I, I need a better paper trail, okay. and I need to be able to follow up with these people, um, especially it. it, it it looks poorly on me as the code, the code administrator when people don't think that I'm doing my job correctly if I can't actually reach out to the people who are complaining. And unfortunately, there are cases where we do get complaints, and as a matter of deduction, they're going to figure out who's complaining. Right. So well, with that said, it's kind of saying that the city, the resident can't go to the city council member to make a complaint. I mean, I guess my hope is that as a council member, you will direct them to city right. law to file the complaint um, with the assurance that they will, their their data is private. Um, but then they have to fill out the form right. and all of that. To, and, and my thinking is, I mean, I get all that and I, get, I totally understand what you're saying, but that to me takes away the citizen who voted us in and elected us to represent them. It, t it directs them straight to City Hall and not coming to us with their concerns or complaints. Well, I, think I think they can definitely still come to you with their concerns. Right. And, and if we obviously at the council know that we need to direct them to you or you know a member of city staff. If, even if you know if you're not there, then we would direct them to me or Anna or whoever's in the office to then forward it to you. Or whatever, but I think as a council member, it's it's also your job to make sure that you're, you know, telling these people to follow the right procedure. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you have me hired as the code enforcement officer, and I think in order for me to do my job, right, I need to be able to have this information and be able to follow up with people um, because I'm having difficulties when. A neighbor, the person that's been complained against, comes in, and I don't have all the facts. I and then I don't have the right person to go to to get those facts from. What if then the complaint still, you know, they come to me and I say, you need to go talk to Maggie, you know, file your form, and they're still not comfortable doing that. Then what? I then it then it says upon the completion, they will not the action will be taken. I think that that's just what's going to have to happen in order for us to follow up. Okay. That's I, think it, I think it also prevents false complaints too because, and he said, she said type things because there is no documentation. You know? The problem being is if, okay, say they come, say you get it by Facebook. Right. And you come in and you tell us and we write the letter and they don't rectify the situation and now we send them a letter that says you have five days to do it or you're going to get fined a hundred dollars. And they say, I'm not paying it. And this ends up in some kind of a uh, battle, or we try to assess it in court, or however we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. How are we going to prove what started it, other than your Facebook page? Mm -hmm. Right. So if it's not in writing, we have nothing to go back on. The judge is going to say, goodbye. I mean, it, it, we're probably not going to go to court over some little $50, $100 thing. Right. But if it got to be some big, something big, <coughs> we have nothing to stand on. So that's why we really need something in writing that starts the whole thing out. You know, if they're not comfortable bringing it into City Hall, I'm going to file it on, I mean, you know, if they, if they get it printed offline, or you come and pick one up and have them fill it out and bring it in, you know, just so we have, we have to have something. Yeah, but then it's a public record. But the names are private. That data is private. If it's a complaint about someone's property, it's private. So they do not, their name does not become public. Well, and really, that part of the complaint policy isn't changing. The last sentence, I'm going to assume this is the current policy. 1990? Yes, it's just kind of. So, there it says, in most cases, if a complaint refuses to sign a complaint form, no action will be taken by the city clerk. Mm -hmm. 
so there's no change to that portion of the policy. It's just putting it in better order. Okay, say, I don't, say the resident's got a complaint that's 12 o'clock on Friday. Where does he go? Comes in on Monday. I got it. So, uh, so the complaint then, what's going on, is that to last until Monday. What if, he, what if his complaint is on Saturday and says we have Monday? No, because council members are available 24-7. Well, yeah, that doesn't mean that they can call for council. Right, right. But then, you know, we direct them and say, well, I'm sorry, we can't, you have to go Monday morning, which I'm sure everybody here would say, you need to go to the city staff and you know, talk to Maggie or whatever to file a complaint, but we have this, what are we going to do, whether it's Friday at 12 o'clock or Saturday or Sunday? I mean, we can't just... And we can certainly take that right? information and get the information from the complainer, complainant right. and get that information as well as contact information and pass that directly on to the city and so can handle that and follow I mean, that's what should happen, that we get the information so the city can actually contact the person who's making a complaint and follow up on the complaint. Uh, if that's done, then, then they can take care of that complaint right away. Uh, do you have any other comment? I mean, I was seeing private data in the council pack that there is some equal opportunity employment form that's supposed to be removed from the application, and that was not what was put in the council packet. So, what kind of safeguards would be put in place to protect the complaint information? Uh, I think that happened before you, Maggie, so I'm not like. I mean, I'm the person that receives all the complaints, and I'm the one that, if I do get a data request, I'm the one that has to fulfill that data request, and so it would be my responsibility to make sure that that data stays private. And if that did get out, it would be my fault, and it would be me that's liable. I just more wanted to bring up if there'd be like a specific safeguard or something. Um, I mean, I think the safeguard right now is that I'm the only one that really gets the information, so I'm the only person that would be able to process that information. Nobody else in the office processes the complaints. So I guess I'm, that's maybe a safeguard in itself, that it only goes through one person. So, as well as the private data safeguards. Right. So, in regards to that, as points then what happens if like we see we're out driving around and I see that Jill has something wrong in her yard and it's you know and I have a complaint on it and I'm like you know she's got a boat parked or something you know like any neighbor with a plane on it whatever how does that then go to you because I'm the one seeing it the neighbor's not complaining then do I fill out a form and say Michelle Otto is complaining about whatever? Concern. 
so in order for staff to know that, that would have to be checked box somewhere or something like that. So that's somehow the information has to be transmitted to for us. They would have to know about it, yeah. For, for the record, <clears throat> for the record, Barbara Swanson and Wendy Madsen have used that for years. They, you get a letter and you were curious, well, who complained? Oh, we can't tell you that. They pull stuff out of the air and they ought to use it as a means to get even with people who were too nosy in City Hall. That had to be said. Okay, so Andy, can you work with uh, Andy in reference to that to see what we can uh, include in that in reference to anonymous complaints? Because I think there are some that would deem appropriate action or action by the city, even if they were made anonymously. Uh, would you agree, Maggie? Okay, so you're, I'm sorry. saying that we need to reword number two? I would agree because our current policy allows us to act on things that are of a serious nature or emergency nature, even though they may be anonymous. And it gives the impression of the villain that we will not take action. And, and I think that's not appropriate as to where we are. Because there are some things that, you know, the, the safety and welfare issue that we're going to act on. And the other piece of it is, is that we need to look at, and maybe the language that's in our old policy is not what should be there as far as what the Data Privacy Act language is uh, regarding persons who feel that they're under arrest for some reason that if their information is released. Okay. So that would be something that I would like to see on the too. Yeah, 
way to address those type of housing conditions and needs of the community. Um, the League of Minnesota Cities has included information that is in your packet on um, the legislation. They've also provided a sample opt-out ordinance. Um, this becomes effective September 1 unless cities adopt by ordinance an opt-out option. Um, the Planning Commission has conducted that public hearing and is recommending that um, the city adopt the enclosed ordinance opting out. And the ordinance um, references an amendment. It would add Chapter 1014. I think we're looking at a couple different places we could potentially put it, but it should say 1014 in all areas. Um, opting out and again, the uh, Minnesota cities language is utilized in that uh, ordinance for consideration. Where are we with adopting our own ordinance? Uh, the Planning Commission received information on accessory dwelling units at the last meeting, uh, but we have not formalized any uh, language at this time or conducted any public hearings. So if there are members of the community that have thoughts on it, um, we're just beginning that process, but wanted to get the Council's action on this first. The only thing that concerns me with opting out is that um, in three weeks, if we don't have the ordinance in place, people can do whatever they want. So if it takes us six months, or even if it takes us two months to come up with an ordinance, that's a whole month for people to be able to do whatever they want. And as I understand it, though, if we opt out, they would not be able to do anything outside of the current current ordinance that is in place for the property, right? Correct. That is correct. So, so, so they would not be able to do anything outside of that ordinance unless we have an ordinance in place. Right now, if we do not opt out, then this state law becomes mandatory and we automatically opt in on the 1st of September. Correct. Correct. But the, the residents would still have to apply to the city. So it's not like anybody can still just erect a structure and say, well, so-and-so is living there. There still has to be an application process, correct? Right. Correct, but it's a, uh, I think, a 15-day turnaround. Um, and there's a public hearing process, and um, we need to collect those medical records, stating from the physician, physician assistants, what the medical needs are. So there's some question on retaining that information in City Hall and who does that as well. Um, so I think it's growing need in communities across um, the country, but I think um, the Planning Commission felt that it should be more tailored and address some of the, the concerns that might be left in the legislation as proposed. And, and I have some concerns as far as the connections and what, and what requirements are made for those connections, whether they be conduit or whether they just be an extension cord, and the, the connections for water, whether that be a, a food safe hose or what that is. So that connection kind of bothered me from the safety aspect. Um, the other concern that I have is I think we need to tailor that to ours so that the six months and then the recurring six months may not be an, an appropriate um, time frame if you have a mother-in-law or, or a mother's, you know, tiny house put on your property, that that one-year period may not cover the period that's needed for, for care for that person. So I think we need to tailor something a little more appropriate to it because this puts a definite time stop on it and it requires us to take the guidelines and set up already, which I'm not sure I agree with. Well, this is meant for just temporary, so something more mobile. So like something more like a mother-in-law house would be a permanent structure that would fall under different guidelines, according to this. Um, is there, so whether we adopt this or not, is there anything you know, stating that if we, you know, come up with our own ordinance or if we change our minds that we can, you know, change that. You know, we adopt your own ordinance. So, I just worry that, you know, yes, we obviously have other things in place, you know, we don't have to follow our regular ordinances and stuff, but people will do what they want. If you don't yeah, opt out, you're giving them the opportunity to park a trailer in someone's driveway or yes. anything. So if, or by opting out, you're stopping that, and then they can, then we can write an ordinance that says what they can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. But not necessarily. I mean, you already have 
these extravagant fish houses that sit on people's driveways all summer long, or campers. That they, they can't live in them. They're not no. supposed to live in them. <laughs> right. Difference. Right. Well. <laughs> but this would give them the option, you know, if they hook it up properly and they follow the rules, that they can do it. And I think until we have a policy that is tailored to better means, because this is obviously a problem that is not going to go away for many, many years to come, um, I think they have pretty strict guidelines, so if we opt into their guidelines, it would be pretty difficult for anybody to follow the guidelines, whereas if we opt out, the guidelines aren't quite as strict. So I just think in the meantime, until we have our own policy in place, it would make sense to but, so Greg gave a run here, if we don't do anything right now, we can't opt out at a later date. For opting out, it's basically now or never. That's right. 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 And you know, so we can always opt out back right. Mm -hmm. My only concern is, as we have these aging baby boomers, we don't have enough housing available for, for these individuals if they get sick, if what have you. And not everybody can just house their in the house, they just can't, there's not enough room. So I don't necessarily agree with the policy, but I don't want to lose sight of a potential ordinance that we could put in place in the future. So what are we going to do to ensure that that ordinance continues to move forward? Um, I think we want to see what the council's uh, feelings were on this tonight, and then you can drive the planning commission to start drafting that ordinance. I agree, I think that we need to draft our own ordinance. But I think but we need to do it relatively quickly. I think in the
So with that, we would recommend approval of the preliminary plan and the resolution that is included in your packet. Discussion? Motion to approve 2016 22. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2016 22, the preliminary class. Second. I'll second. Lloyd? Aye. Thank you. Then the uh, next step in the process would be to review and approve the final plan for World Rolling Meadows Renewing Corridor. That information is in the packet on pages 132 to 137. Uh, again, the Planning Commission reviewed the uh, final plan as it relates to the subdivision ordinance requirements. And it is consistent with uh, the comprehensive plan and with the preliminary plan. Uh, they have reviewed uh, the requirements of the subdivision ordinance. And they have recommended um, that the City Council approve the final plat contingent upon any uh, comments from DNR Wright County again. A final title uh, reviewed by the City Attorney, and I know he's been working on that. And approval of the preliminary plat, which you've now taken care of, and the vacation of the drainage utility easements. And then finally, contingent upon the transfer of the property identified on the <coughs> packet from Mr. Gary Brummer to the City Council. Discussion. Motion to approve 2016 23. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2016 23. Final flat. Second. I'll second. Okay, yeah. Joe. Aye. Joe. Aye. 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 Motion carries by vote. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public works weapons discharge. There are exceptions um, to that rule. Uh, law enforcement officers, of course, members of the military, they never got to that. Um, persons engaged in target trap or ski shooting at a, at a qualified range. Those are the two ordinances. Yeah, those are the two exceptions right now to that ordinance um, rule. What I did on the top of page 140 in your packet, I drafted a third exception after talking with Sean about the issues out there. and. The way this reads is it's, I don't want to read it all, but I'll paraphrase it, that if you have uh, uh, regular employees of the city that are authorized and, and put in writing by the public works director so we can maintain just paperwork as to who, who can do this uh, hunt, so to speak, um, to, to participate in the control or eradication of non-domestic animals. And I cited that section 52.11 of the city code uh, to make sure that we're dealing with non-pets, essentially. Um, or vermin that are, in the reasonable opinion of the public works director, damaging or posing a clear danger to city property or city equipment. Um, the, the, the discharging of any firearm or any weapon for the purposes authorized by that exception may only be undertaken, obviously, on property owned by the city. We're not talking about private property here. And best efforts should be taken to inform the city's designated law enforcement agency the activities authorized. So if there's some, if you will hear some shooting, uh, the, the law enforcement jurisdiction obviously is aware of that. Um, it's, it's usually not a, you know, an emergency, so they can be uh, informed of that. And if anybody calls 911, there can be an explanation given. So uh, that's really the extent of it to allow for some cleanup of city owned property from animals that should not be around there. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Great, really questions on that? Okay. Oh. Okay. 
Um, um, wastewater ponds don't like to be. <laughs> but wise badgers do. Wisconsin. <laughs> um, the concern that I would have, Sean, with this is to make sure that we have the discussion with reference to a quality backstop. That's sure. That would be the biggest concern that I have with reference to that. Uh, further discussion?
good feedback. Um, I know you guys noticed that we changed the route going through the city. I'd like to thank Sean very much for your help there. <laughs> and um, it, it was great. Um, a lot more people, a lot, a lot better um, representation, I think, of our community. Because I noticed I was walking around picking up the signs and barricades afterwards. There were quite a few houses that had people sitting in the driveways that were cheering people on. So that was that was awesome. May we held a picnic for us, for the uh, veterans. Um, we also participated in the local Memorial Day celebration. Um, and then, as Melissa said earlier, here at the Twins game, we were recognized by the Minnesota Twins, you know, for our accomplishments of what our organization has done, which is really a great a great thing. I mean, you look at how many other cities have had this and we were chosen as one of the ones to get some recognition. Um, we also received our official 501c3 status, so that was something that took a little time, uh, learning some of the legal terms on stuff, but uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's great. It helps open up our doors. Um, we were able to help out the VFW with the burger stand at the Delano Parade and also bingo at the Wright County Fair. Um, and I'd just like to thank uh, Melissa, Tracy, Kathy, Abby, Lori for all the hard work that they've put in and the people that they've volunteered, like their husbands Wade, Norm, and Frank, who get to help. <clears throat> but uh, just keep watching our uh, Facebook page and the website for upcoming events. We've got other things planned and, and coming in the future. So thank you again. One question. Yes. How did you uh, contact these veterans? I think you overlooked quite a few of them. We, 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 we can't go anywhere and get information that says this are the veterans that you have in your community. All we can do is by word of mouth. So if someone comes up and tells me that Melissa's a veteran, then I can contact her. That's the only way I can con we can contact them. We can't go to up to um, Buffalo and get a list of all of our veterans in our community. So, because that, that is sealed information. So, I mean, if, if you guys know of more veterans in our community, happily let us know. Um, we've got our email, you know, list. we've got a list going, and we're set, you know, we're sending out cards to them, you know, on the holidays and things like that, and letting them know when we are having like our cookie giveaways and things like that. Hey, RSVP back to us, and we'll make sure you've got, you know, I think we had, I think, put three dozen cookies okay. for each, you know, for each service member. So we're we're trying. We've, I know we've been up to Buffalo, who has a lot more service members than we do. We asked them, what, how many service members do you have? And they have no idea. And they don't have a list either. They they have nothing. They have nothing for that. We have we have approximately forty on our list that we know so. of, but we know there's a lot more out there. We just but, but, and, and and that's, yeah. that's, that's right. asking new members. Us to refer the names, we'll refer them beyond the other and in the mm -hmm. So that's appropriate. So we're doing more now than we were. Because, but also, I would suggest that it's incumbent upon residents as well. If you know of a veteran, let someone from beyond the other road know or or let us know and we'll refer you. If our contact information is on the city website, um, at least one way to contact us. So. So Any else, Ben? No, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so I know you're busy signing up somebody for the list. Good. <laughs> yes. um, Excel Energy Franchise uh, Agreement. I'll grab this one, Mr. Yes. Mayor, of course, the council. This is a uh, basically an update to a previous gas franchise ordinance that I think is going to expire at the end of this year. Um, that was entered into back in the early 90s uh, with the predecessor to uh, Excel, which I think was Western and Western Gas. Western Gas. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I was providing a copy of that, that ordinance from the early 90s. And basically, this is an update of that ordinance with, with obviously new names as to who the successors are to this. 
uh, ordinance. It's a 20 year term, I believe, um, section 2.1. And really, the other uh, main points on this is uh, your, what will you typically find with these ordinances if the city has to put a road or do an improvements to a road and that implicates the, the uh, gas equipment there, then uh, uh, Excel would normally have to relocate that or rearrange it at their cost. Uh, if Excel had just done something on their own cost and the city didn't, didn't state anything that was needed to be done, then you have to go back and do something on an emergency basis. Sometimes the city would have to at least pay money just to put that back the way it was before it was moved. But that's really the only um, way the city's going to pay any extra here, and that I don't think happens too often. Um, and then there are other requirements that, re that require Excel to relocate when public grounds need to be disturbed. And if they need to do some work, they need to get a permit still. So that's, that's everything that came into this. But in page 148, there's an indemnification talk about the company indemnifying the city for the work that they do under this, under this franchise. So, please come forward. Oh, we have a, <laughs> yes. I, I figured you were referencing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Mayor of City Council. Scott Johnson, Excel Energy. I'm a community relations manager. So it's exactly like Andy was saying. Our attorney worked with Andy on the language. It's a 1992 agreement that was a 25 year agreement. Now we're just raising that one uh, before it expires in January. So that's pretty much all we're doing here. So, so any questions you have, uh, feel free to ask. Questions? I've got a question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I need some more clarification on Section 9. Page 148, going into 149, franchise brief. Can you, can you explain to you what that means? It's all for you. Don't mind, I, I can sign my part of it. So, so, all this is is a, a franchise fee. It's All it is is an opening paragraph. This does not say the city council is going to do it, it just gives them the option of future that they can pass an ordinance, which they have to go through their procedure on, on doing that. It's just that it has this in here to say that they can do a separate ordinance for a franchise fee. Otherwise, without this paragraph in there, we would have to renew this whole agreement, all this language, and then do an ordinance, which which why we add this paragraph typically in. So, the very first line of page 149, what's the reference to other cities? Page 
Yeah, I, I heard that. I, uh, I appreciate you guys going out to actually utilizing that, so that's, that's great. So. Any other discussion? Any other questions? One other comment question. I didn't get a chance to look at it fully, but is there some, is there a clause in there about removing existing, like whenever you're relocating the gas mains, about removing the existing gas mains in the right way? I think that's in the restoration part, but, uh, and I think that's in the, if, if we're in the way of, of your construction, then we're obligated to move it, but if we're not in your way of construction, it would be in place. So it would be, I think it's in 3.4. Yep, relocate or remove its gas facility. Right. So, okay. So, I think to summarize this, the, the old franchise has not been touched since 1992. Uh, franchise fees, maybe something will be on your radar in the next you know, few months or so. And you haven't had your part of it? I do. And, and the reason why. Going back here is because in uh, 2012 we passed the electric transmitter fee, and the language pretty much mirrors mirrors that, and you have that same section. That was the electric. Question. So good. That was 2012, you said. 2012, yeah. Yes. Anything further? Yes. Motion to approve 2016-08. Approve uh, resolution 2016-08. Second. Oh, second. I've got a board that can Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> Joe Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Lloyd? Aye. Joe? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Motion carries by. Thank you very And thanks for coming and thanks for yep. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, is how do we identify the 
Mr. Tanner compared to somebody else that has not seeked permission that just takes it upon themselves to go hunt. We've had that issue in the past where there's been people out there hunting and the individuals that did ask in the past were in a different state at that time. So how do we identify that? I don't know. So you have a uh, permission slip you can put in the, uh, in the window? You do a vehicle tag. Or could he send a text to Maggie? Yeah, like the morning he's going out? That's certainly acceptable by me. It's just that in the past we've had people out there that we thought was the person that asked and it wasn't. Yeah. I, I think both the notification some by some means, whether that be through you, because you're pretty much in charge of fire or these other things. Yeah, I could, yeah just give me, give me my number and then uh, also, maybe a, a vehicle tag as well. I think we can identify vehicles that are parked there. Okay. I would advise. I would advise him to keep the form or whatever on his person out there too, saying I have permission to hunt on this property. I would agree. That would be the best yeah. course of things. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody doesn't have that, then they trespass. Yeah. Okay. So those three three options should take care of it. Yeah. Any motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, agreement um, for hunting up the train property as amended. Second? No, second. Lloyd? Aye. Kill? Aye. Michelle? Aye. I go nine, Melissa? Aye. Once you trade five of them. Upcoming meetings. Uh, we have a personnel committee meeting on August 15, 2016. At, there's a time change. It's usually at 3 o'clock. It'll be at 2.30 p.m. On that same day, there will be a union negotiation meeting at 3. Uh, August 17, planning commission meeting at 7 here at the community center. And uh, just, I know this is a little far out, but September 21st will be the comprehensive plan visiting session at 7.30, um, right after the planning commission meeting, and we will be uh, promoting that as well to get residents to come participate. Any okay. so other planning meetings? Acknowledgements. Um, How about open forum? Oh, wait a minute. In the, um, in the upcoming meetings, September 21st, conference of time, but you didn't have the EDA September 20th in there. Okay, we change that. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, so we, I, usually I don't go into September, but I usually do August, but um, okay. I was just kind of throwing it out there. Oh. Just as kind of plan it, wait, it wasn't a normal meeting. Right. Um, Bob, this is addressed directly to me, and I cannot accept that. Well, just I've been asked to ask you if you intend to run for re-election. I do intend to run. Please spare us. Please take this back. I cannot accept no. that. No, you must take it back. I oh, that's that's it. a re that's. I cannot accept this. It's well, illegal. That's just a refund. It is illegal for me to accept this. Well, it give it to the city lawyer. Please mail give this it to, to the him. city lawyer. Please mail that to him. And print that, Mr. Boyd. Right. Now, acknowledgments. Um, we'd just like to acknowledge Tony Fingers for four years of service on the EDA Commission and John Varner for three and a half years of service on the EDA Commission. Um, they have both, um, they are both currently not on the Commission anymore, so we wanted just to acknowledge them. Other acknowledgements? I'd like to acknowledge the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon for being acknowledged by the Minnesota Twins. So, and the work that they put in this Absolutely. year, so. Definitely for all their hard work for the veterans. Much appreciated. 
I'd like to acknowledge the Parking Rec Commission for their hard work for uh, Party in the Park Summer Splash and the success of that event, along with the Girl Scouts for their willingness to provide the dinner. Some pictures that look like it was lots of fun, unfortunately, couldn't be there. And the fire department for their willingness to. Um, my question is who won, the, who won the water fire? The fire department or the, or the kids? <laughs> so it didn't it didn't play out like it did last year. The water balloons went first and then they were all having a good time and eventually the fire truck came off, but it didn't play out like it did last year, so I'm not sure there was a winner before it was like everybody's a winner. Before you guys dismiss, can you just give us a quick update on what on the solar garden? I actually was gonna ask about that when Excel was up there. The um, staff continues to work with um, on Sun, SunShare and they have been in the process of submitting various uh, items required as part of the conditions of the permit. Mm -hmm. So they recently had a couple of them submitted and approved and then we will be going on by city engineers and the attorney and some of the other items. So, so it's in process. So they won't be necessarily constructing this year. I think they're content. Every other solar garden has been shot down, or the one supposed to go over in Delano, between Delano and here. The city of Delano just filed suit against the Great County to stop it. So I'm, I was just yeah, is there if that's a going moratorium on, in Great County on solar gardens currently? There is now, yeah. Within the city limits. What's that? It's within the city limits. Okay, so there's an exception where if it's in the city, in a city. Then that moratorium doesn't hold yeah. the ground. They'll probably only apply to new applications as of the day of the moratorium. And this application has been pretty hard. They have over like 25 applications that were in place before the moratorium, from my understanding. Okay. There's uh, one under construction. I drive by every day right along the way. 12, uh, just east of that one. And any credit for the good of the city. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have one thing. There hasn't been one single word of discussion in Montreal days, which is this month, a couple weeks. What is the council's desire for the parade and the activities for Montreal days that we need to be educated with the Rainbow's Committee? Well, I believe that the form is filled out. Maybe filled out the form first, correct? We have filled right. out the form. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We will need a city chart. Correct. And last year, the council members provided the candy yeah. and the tops. Just need to make sure they're in the freezer a long time. He's been in there for a year. Yeah, <laughs> 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 That's good for one month. <laughs> Last Thursday we met. They just kind of gave us the gist of our day one, but I want to make sure that the council, I haven't, I haven't heard one single word out of the council, so I thought I'd bring it up. We do want to be in it, and we have, we have to make sure we've got our place in the parade. Thanks. Okay. So, Anything further? You can I can. Uh, as long as I can approve it for it. Recommendation to adjourn? Motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Most curious by vote.